Hi Brahmas, in this video we will showcase a database called Digital Public Library of America. We're going to start in the history guide and click on the tab primary sources. Here we have hyperlinked to this free public website. Once you click on it, it will open it up. And the cool thing about this front page is that it's showing you a lot of collections of primary sources depending on your topic. So since our subject deals with US history, we're going to select that option. And then depending on the historical period in which your topic falls under, you might be able to filter the primary sources based on this time period. Let's say that I'm interested in something before the Civil War. So I'm going to click here. Now, the sets below, all of these are collections of primary sources. So depending on what you're interested in, you might find something that intrigues you. For example, let's say that I have heard of the Trail of Tears. So now that I see this heading of Cherokee removal, I might be intrigued to see what they have. So by opening up this topic, they already have a collection of primary sources on Cherokee removal and the Trail of Tears. And if you click on show full overview, this is basically an introductory article that kind of summarizes the significance of this topic and the primary sources that follow. Now, if we scroll down a bit, you can start seeing the collection of primary sources. And at this point, it is up to you to decide which of these primary sources are you going to focus around. Do you want to focus on a letter from Andrew Jackson to the Cherokee Nation? Or maybe you want to select an excerpt from a treaty which led to the removal of the Cherokee nation to reservations west of the Mississippi. At this point, it is up to you, depending on your research focus and the arguments that, that you're trying to explore. So let's look at one primary source, right? I clicked on this item and I can see the digitized version of this treaty. And if I wanted to cite this item, this website gives me an option here. Now keep in mind that sometimes these citations are not 100% correct. As you notice here, it seems good enough, but we should probably double check that citation based on MLA standards. Let's scroll a little bit more. Assuming that you can read this, you can go ahead and read the digitized version of this document, or you can also click on show full description to see the transcription of this document in the case that you cannot actually read the original writing. And you can keep exploring other primary sources under this set. At this point, I'm going to go back to the front page of that collection. And I want to show you another thing. Sometimes their teaching guides can be very useful in terms of putting the topic into context. So even though you are not a teacher in the context of this assignment, these questions might help you think about your thesis or your arguments or just the direction of your research paper. For example, let's look at question number two. Use Governor's Severe's Letter to Warriors, Governor's Speech to the Cherokee Council, and the letter from President Jackson to the Cherokee Nation to summarize the arguments made by the representatives of the U.S. in support of Cherokee removal. So this can kind of trigger some thoughts about, oh yes, why were the United States pressuring the Cherokee Nation to abandon their native land? And you can use these primary sources that they've kind of hinted at to kind of back up or explore that research question. 
And then if you still want to cite this whole collection of primary sources, you can still do so in this button and they give you more options and citation styles. And I believe Professor Walsh prefers the MLA style for your sources. Now, if there's something that you didn't quite find in the primary source sets, you can also just type your topic onto the search bar. For example, let's say that I have heard about the Indian Removal Act, and you know that it's somehow related to the Trail of Tears. So I can easily just type in my keywords to see what this website has. Now on the left hand side, it can be very useful because since this website is all about primary sources, sometimes these sources are text based or image based or sometimes they're audio, audio recordings. But for this time period, it's probably only going to be text or images. And then under the subjects, you can kind of filter down depending on your particular topic. So let's say that I was interested in, I mean, it's just interesting to see all these subjects, right, that are related to the keyword query Indian Removal Act. And maybe the best one seems to be this one, United States Indian Removal Act of 1830. So by clicking there, I'm only going to pull up the articles that are specifically related to that, right? Now, I only pulled up four sources here, but it's interesting that I they didn't really have the Indian Removal Act of 1830, right? So sometimes one database, even this one, it's not going to have everything, but you can easily also go to Google and you can type Indian Removal Act 1830 and in Google you can also do this technique this command where you can put site colon dot gov so that you only get results from government websites and this is useful because the Library of Congress which is a federal government agency collects a lot of these primary sources so incidentally, our first result happened to be coming from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And they seem to have information about the Indian Removal Act. And maybe they have the actual document itself. And sure enough, here it is. This is the historical document. This very much counts as a primary source. So I could use this in addition to the other sources that I have found on the Digital Public Library of America. So once again, the Digital Public Library of America and the Library of Congress are great public websites to find historical primary sources. If you're still having trouble finding primary sources specifically about your topic, sometimes Google can help you out. Let's say that I'm doing research on Phyllis Wheatley but I want to make sure that I'm getting results that come from government or education institutions. So with this command, you can tell Google to only give you websites with a domain of .gov or .edu. And you do have to type OR in capital letters. And it does help if you put this command within parentheses. So with this example, you are telling Google, look up Phyllis Wheatley, but only from websites that end in .gov or .edu domains. This can be useful because most of the institutions that are going to be digitizing and preserving primary sources are more than likely going to be government or libraries or colleges or universities or museums. Now, another trick that you can do is you can start another command with a parenthesis and you can type something like special collections or archives or primary sources. And I'm putting primary sources and special collections within quotation marks because I want that exact 
phrase and not the word special in the word collections anywhere in the document. So even though this is a little complex, you're basically telling Google, look up Phyllis Wheatley and the websites have to come from these domains, but the websites also have to contain either of these three keywords. So let's try this. And it went from 30,000 results to 13,000. But now I feel a little bit more confident that all of these public websites are about primary sources and they're coming from credible institutions. For example, this first result is coming from the Library of Congress, loc.gov. And then if I scroll down a little bit more, I can see that Emory University has a rare book library and they seem to have some things on Phyllis Wheatley. So sometimes this is a way to find the institutions that are archiving and preserving special collections related to your topic.